In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we're looking at uh, part two of the parable of the Good Samaritan. In the first section, we saw how the lawyer asked the Lord Jesus about how he can inherit eternal life. And the Lord asked him, what's your reading of the law? And he answers, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And then the Lord tells him, go do this. And, you know, the lawyer wants to justify himself, so he says, who is my neighbor? Which brings us to today's section of, of the good, uh, the parable of the good Samaritan. Today, you know, the parable goes like this. It starts with a man who's leaving Jerusalem and walking to Jericho. Now, Jerusalem stands for everything that is, uh, you know, the home of God, the temple, the heart, the place where God is. And Jericho stands for and symbolizes the place of death, the, the place of destruction, the place of sin. So there's a man on his way, on his journey towards Jericho. And there he encounters thieves. And the thieves do three things to him. They strip him, he's left wounded, and then they depart and leave him alone and leave him half dead. And this is really an icon, an image of what sin does to us. On our way to Jericho, when we are tempted and we make that decision to sin, it is important that we are aware and can see the icon of what sin does to us. It strips us of our dignity, of our original standard, of our original uh, glory that we were created for. We were created to be in God's image and likeness. And, and to, you know, we were created to be in union with God. And when we sin, we are stripped of that dignity. We are stripped of that glory. And we, we, we you know, are, are wounded by sin. The, the sin doesn't just affect us. Uh, uh, it's not just an event, but rather it wounds us. We require healing from sin. It's not just something that we can, you know, confess or repent about and, and as though it's an event, but rather we have to know that there are circumstances from sin and, and it can wound us. And the third thing is that the demons depart. The thieves that symbolize here, the demons, they depart. There may be a promise of satisfaction, of pleasure, but the moment we accomplish the sin, we are left alone to ourselves. And that aloneness, we are left half dead, barely alive. And that's what it means to be in sin, is to be barely alive. Biologically, we may still function, but spiritually, we are barely alive. Now, the story of the parable goes on, and it's important to see that although here in this kind of specific uh, story, we see that that uh, uh, this poor person has fallen into sin. Another way of looking at this part of the parable that the person who is stripped, wounded, and left completely alone, we can see it as the person of Christ who suffered for us. Now, now bear with me here. It says that a priest comes by and sees him and goes to the other side. And then a Levite passes by and sees him and goes to the other side. When I, when I read this passage, all I can think about was the Matthew 25 passage, where the Lord turns to, he, you know, he separates the good from the evil, the sheep from the goats, and he turns to the goats and says, I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was thirsty and you did not give me to drink and so on. And, and the, the goats answer and say, like, like when, did we, when did we see you hungry and not feed you? And he answers, whenever you did not do it to the least of these, my brethren, you did not do it to me. So in this parable, the Christ here is the one who is stripped, wounded, and abandoned, left half dead. And we who often are too busy being religious, too busy being pious, too busy with our own lives and cares of this world, pass by Christ. We go on the other side. We pass by the other side and we pass by day in and day out opportunities 
of encountering and loving Christ himself. And so here the icon of, of this wounded traveler is on the one hand what sin does to us, on the other hand we can see a completely opposite icon where Christ is the one who is wounded, who is stripped, who is abandoned, who is seeking help from us. The Lord chooses to unite with himself with everyone who is suffering and we are given the opportunity either to go to him, to, to bandage his wounds, to take care of him, to touch him, to pour oil and wine on him, to bring him to an inn, to take care of him, to provide for him, or we may be like the priests and the Levites and the religious folk who are too busy to see him and pass by the other side. May today our eyes be open to recognize the wounded God who allows himself to co-suffer with everyone that we may have the opportunity of communion with him. May our eyes be open today to see him, to touch him, to be with him, to even provide for his restoration. Have a beautiful day.